You're listening to the One Pride Cast. Hello and welcome to an NFL Draft Week edition of the One Pride Cast presented by MGM Grand Detroit. I'm Tori Petrie, and this week we've got a special guest for you guys from the Lions personnel department. That's Dave Sears, the Lions Director of College Scouting. Dave, thank you so much for being with us today. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start here. Help us get to know you, your background, and, and how you ended up at the Lions. Uh, well, I've been in the NFL for going on 24 years now. I began with the uh, Washington Redskins at the time. They're now the football team. But uh, and then I was with the Houston Texans for eight years, and this is my 14th year with the Lions. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, how how are you feeling going into yet another draft week? It's pretty exciting. The fans are all excited, but I know it's a lot of work for you guys. So what's this week like for you? Yeah, it's always uh, it's always exciting. Uh, doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. Um, this is the culmination of you know years of work, really, and so uh, it gets exciting in the process, knowing that you're going to see it all come to fruition and find out who you get. And it's always <laughs> kind of a surprise who falls to you or who's there. And you know you're holding your breath a little bit that you get a shot at them. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But it's always interesting. And it's always a little different. So. Uh, yeah, definitely look forward to it. What is the adrenaline like in the draft war room when you're just kind of watching the picks come off the board, especially that first night and, you know, wondering who's going to be there when when you pick? Yeah, well, it depends uh, Depends when you're picking. And True. Kinda, uh, I've been in situations where we've been picking number one and then later on in the draft and you're kind of waiting around and that's where it gets a little more tense because – you see a guy you really like and you're just hoping he's still there. And then <laughs> if you really like him, you might talk about moving up to go get him and stuff like that. So uh, it's always kind of a little bit different, but and sometimes it can go really slow if you pick really early and then you're just sitting around watching what other teams do for the rest of the night. So, Yeah, what about what about the pick before your pick? How, how nervous are you when you're like, okay, I think I have an idea of, of who we're going to take here and I think I know who's going to be left, but I'm just hoping that the team in front of us doesn't mess it up. Yeah, I mean, you've been in scenarios where sometimes the team right in front of you takes your guy and it kind of deflates uh, the room a little bit, but uh, you got to quickly rebound from that and make sure you're making the right selection after that. And then there's, you know, sometimes you'll see, you know, everybody get up and start cheering because, you know, you know your guy slipped through and then you got a shot at him. So, uh, yeah, it can always be a little nerve wracking when uh, the team in front of you is on the clock for sure. Yeah, I, I love hearing from you about what that experience is like because I think that we'll never truly understand it uh, unless you're in that room. So thank you for mm-hmm. taking us into that room. And I want you to take us into the scouting department a little bit as well because I think a, a lot of fans know the general, all right, the GM is, is the guy that's that's making the pick um, or he's collaborating with the head coach or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. But w- what else goes into a scouting department? Help us understand what your role exactly is. Well, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, my role is kind of the um, supervisor of all the area scouts and the national scouts and making sure that uh, they're going to the schools they need to be going to, assigning the schools where we have players. That all starts with what's called the combine scout, and that guy will go out in the spring and generate the initial lists of prospects, where they're at. We'll have a meeting on those guys over the summer. And then our area scouts, every, From we have eight guys that we call area scouts right now. They'll spread out and go across the country in their areas. We'll have three national scouts that overlap them. Then myself and other guys from the front office will go out and kind of overlap those guys. And so they just lay the groundwork and we just keep getting more looks piled on top. And then we bring all that information into a numerous sets of meetings beginning in December that run all the way through. We're still doing them. So uh, right up to the draft. So that's, it's a pretty complex process. It gets kind of certain guys will get weeded out at every level. You'll narrow your scope and the more information you get, you kind of try and hone in on certain guys at certain positions and uh, go from there. When you're overseeing all of those scouts, obviously all those guys are, are, are on the ground. They're visiting the schools and, you know, doing the background work before everybody else starts kind of checking and double checking and all that kind of thing. How much do you actually write reports and watch film when you're also overseeing so many people as, as just a manager? Yeah, a considerable amount. I mean, there's really no less work for me in that regard wow. than when I was an area scout or something. I just have to find, um, 
you know, a little extra time to do some of the management stuff. And I have a great group of guys and they, they really work hard and they're very accountable, uh, very detail oriented and they've been trained correctly. So my, my job's pretty easy with the effort those guys put in, in all honesty. So, you know, my, my passion is watching players and evaluating them and, and trying to help put it all together. So um, those guys do a great job and make my job easier. That's awesome. You're the director of college scouting. So that means you're, you're overseeing who's coming up through the college ranks. So you've got Mm -hmm. a college football season to pay attention to, but you've also got the Lions season to pay attention to, to know where the Lions' strengths and weaknesses are and where they might need to grow and develop. How do you balance that when it's fall and it's football season and you got a lot going on? Well, that's tough because it's pretty much football 24-7, you know, so uh, you always try and make sure that you stay, you know, you're always watching our games, obviously, and then you're trying to break down the tape of our games every week. So, one of our main points of emphasis is to know our roster so that when we're watching college players in the fall, we can compare them to the guys we have. And, hey, is this guy an upgrade? Okay. Is he not as good as, you know, where does he fit in our scheme and how would he be for us? And that's kind of, you know, part part of the thing we mix into our reports so that when we're having these meetings, we're not just talking about players. We're talking about players and how they fit for the Detroit Lions. I love that. That's such interesting insight that – you know, you would think, okay, the college scouting department spends most of their time on college games, but it's important as well to kind of have that comparison on the roster to know, is this guy better than or not as good as someone that we already have? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I find that super fascinating. Thank you for that insight. Obviously, people know you're you're doing your thing during football season. Everyone else's weekends are your busiest time because it's Saturday's college football. It's Sunday. Yep. It's Lions football. So that's what your fall looks like. But how about once we get into January through April, once the college season has wound down and now you're full on in draft prep? What do those months look like? Yeah, well, January, usually we're traveling for uh, all-star games and there's – you know, anywhere from three to five, you know, there, it differs every year because some of these games come and go, but uh, the area scouts will spread out and they'll start hitting all these all-star games. And that's all of January, um, you know, late December, there's been a game called the tropical bowl. We'll go to the gridiron classic, the HBCU game, um, the East West shrine, the senior bowl, the hula bowls back now. So January is pretty busy with guys going to all these different bowl games. And then, we get into February, we usually have a set of meetings, and then we have the combine. And then as soon as the combine's over, we're hitting the road to go to pro days. And that's the first week of March through first or second week of April. Sometimes they spread them out a little bit more. And then we're right back into a series of draft meetings and right up to the draft. So it's pretty – it's very busy. It's just a different kind of busy. You're not going right. to the college campuses to scout players quite the same way you might be going to a college campus to go to a a pro day and watch guys work out or you might be going to an all-star game or you might be in meetings so you're still traveling around quite a bit what's your personal favorite aspect of that time of year uh i I enjoy going to the pro days because it's kind of the finishing touch on all the stuff you've seen that you've evaluated the football player you've gotten the background information and now you're kind of just evaluating the athlete um and just trying to see if all these things that you think about the player also translate to just simple athletic movements in shirt and shorts. You know, if a guy plays fast, does he time fast as well? If a guy moves well on tape, does he back that up, moving well in drill work, things like that. And so it's just another piece, almost the final piece of putting your entire evaluation together. And I enjoy that part of it. Well, we'll get into more about what this year's pro days and everything have been like since it has been so different this year. But before we Mm -hmm. get into that, there's another aspect that's been totally different for you guys, and that's the leadership for the organization as well. The Lions bring in Brad Holmes as their general manager. They bring in Dan Campbell as the head coach. What has it been like getting to work with those guys in the trenches as you prepare for the draft? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, they're both, you know, nice guys. They're both uh, very welcoming and engaging people. Got great personalities. They know a lot of football. Uh, I was actually here as a scout when Dan was here as a player. So uh, I didn't really have a relationship with him, but I recognize the face. I've seen him walk in the halls and stuff. And uh, I've known Brad a little bit from the road. He's been around a long time. Um, So it's been great so far. Um, They both know what they're talking about and you can learn from them. And uh, they're open to any kind of input or uh, interaction anybody has. So it's been great. Yeah, that's something that has seemed to be emphasized all across the the organization, whether it be from, uh, you know, Sheila Ford Hamp's efforts to kind of create a more collaborative uh, approach on the football side of things or just a collaborative approach between uh, Allen Park and Ford Field. What has that collaboration been like, uh, you know, between uh, having two new guys in there and and bringing in a, a bunch of ideas that 
a lot of different people have different ways of doing things. Yeah, I think it's just another great experience. I've, I've been fortunate enough to work for a lot of uh, different people, and they all kind of have their different takes or different slants on how they want to do it. And there's not one uh, cure-all way that's going to work every time or be easy, you know. So um, this has been really interesting. Uh, Brad's brought some unique stuff in here, stuff I hadn't been exposed to before. So it's a great learning experience to me. And Dan brings a tremendous amount of passion and energy, and he really gets into the scouting part of it too, and he's very good at that. So it's been a great experience so far, no question. Well, it's been interesting as well, the, the structure of things and how Sheila Ford Hamp and Rod Wood talked about how those two were going to make decisions together, that they were going to kind of come to an agreement uh, and make those football decisions together. What has it been like being in those rooms and watching them, uh, you know, kind of work out that process? Yeah, well, I think both of those guys are really passionate about this place and wanting to have success here. And I think they recognize each other's strengths and that the way to do it is to do it together. So uh, they're certainly on the same page and um, you know, they're going to listen to everybody's input and they're going to make their decisions and we're going to support them. And that's really the important part. Uh, I don't think there's any egos in there and that's a big deal. And I think both those guys are going to end up doing what's right for the Lions. Well, that's awesome. We're really excited to see how this first draft under Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell plays out, but it's going to be an interesting one because so many things are different. And we said that about last year's draft, but even last year you had a combine. You still got to get to know players at the combine before things kind of switched and and went virtual. And of course, last year you had the challenge of doing it all for the first time and doing things virtually for the first time. And this year you've had a year of practice to be able to learn how to how to make that process work virtually. But there is no combine and things have looked a lot different in the pre-draft prep process. So how has that affected what you guys have done this year specifically? Well, um, you know, the main things you're getting out of the combine are mainly the medical information as well as the on-field timing and stuff. The interviews at the combine are only, you know, 15 to 20 minutes throughout the course of it. So you can still get those kind of interviews over the Zoom calls and everything. It's not the same interpersonal experience, but sometimes those are quite a bit rushed because a guy might be late from one team getting all the way down the hall to your thing, and the interview might only end up being – 13 minutes or something. There's only so much you can get when you meet somebody the first time for 13 minutes. So, you know, our guys are really diving into these Zoom calls and spending a lot of time with the kids and getting to know them. So I don't think we're losing out on that part of it. Right. The medical the medical part of it, they did not uh, bring as many guys in to meet with um, as they usually do in a typical combine year. So our training staff has been scrambling around, really working hard to get all the information they need on that end as well as our scouts. Um, and so that's probably the biggest change. That's kind of a behind the scenes change that nobody would really see, but uh, we still go to all the pro days. So we're still seeing all these kids work out. They're still working out. You know, you got, it's a little different with all the COVID protocols and stuff. You can't meet with them at the school. You can't uh, spend as much time as you might usually do. And you can't get as close to them as you usually would. So it's a little bit challenging, but you still get to see them move around and you're, you're still getting that pro day experience. So that's been good. Yeah, I mean, for someone who loves the pro days so much, how different has this year's pro days been, uh, you know, compared compared to other years? Yeah, it is. It's a little different just because you can't even recognize half the scouts because they're wearing a mask, so you don't even know who you're talking <laughs> to most of the time. But uh, no, it's it's been good. All the schools have been very, um, you know, very uh, helpful in trying to get these things done. I mean, every state has different you know, rules and there's different COVID testing protocols and you're trying to get a COVID test before you get to every one of these pro days to make sure everybody's staying in line with all that stuff. And so that's been a challenge. I know for everybody, the colleges, the players, us, you know, uh, the coaches, all that stuff, but it's, it's been good. I mean, I think everybody has the same goal and that's to hopefully see these kids accomplish their dreams and what's in their best interest and what's in the club's best interest. So uh, I think everybody's worked really hard to pull it off. I think it's been pretty impressive actually. Yeah, I love that. It definitely has taken a lot of effort from a lot of different people. BetMGM, an official partner of the Detroit Lions, invites fans to stay in the action during the football offseason with a risk-free first bet up to $600. Sign up today with bonus code LIONS and discover everything the king of sportsbooks has to offer. Download the app or go to BetMGM.com and enter bonus code LIONS to make your first bet risk-free up to $600. Must be 21 years or older. Gambling problem? Call one 800 270 07117 for confidential help. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Another thing that's different this year is players who have opted out. 
that's not something that you usually have to contend with when you are evaluating a player. And there's even players high atop the draft who opted out. So how have you guys factored that into your evaluations this year? Yeah, that, it's really a kind of rare scenario because in the past, the only time you would be drafting a guy who hadn't played the year before was if the guy got hurt or something like that, which, I mean, that happens. But, you know, uh, some of the really good players ended up opting out this year, so you're having to go back and evaluate them on uh, 2019 tape, and that tape might actually be a guy's true sophomore tape. So you're going to have to project out, hey, how much better can this guy get, yeah. stuff like that. So that's been a challenge, something that – nobody's really been exposed to anything like that before. So it's been pretty interesting and uh, you know, we'll see how it all comes out. I think this kind of a scenario benefits the staffs and GMs who are really good evaluators and who are really organized because this is kind of unlike anything anybody's gone through before. So then with all of those different factors, what in your opinion will it take for teams to be successful in the 2021 draft? Uh, I, I think if they they were really organized and had a good plan going into it, and I think everybody, you know, everybody works hard, everybody's watching the tape, but I think the teams that have, you know, the best evaluators are, are going to benefit because there hasn't been much, as much in-person exposure. I mean, you weren't allowed to go to the practices. You, you missed a whole part of that in the fall. You weren't allowed to be at the combine. You're not allowed to have necessarily the same pro day experience. So, uh, those teams with, you know, good veteran staffs that know what they're doing, I think uh, they're probably going to have a, a slight leg up. You know, I think everybody's grinding. Everybody's working hard. Uh, you know, this is the NFL. I don't think anybody slacks off, but um, I think it'll benefit them a little bit. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So draft week is here. We are preparing for the big Thursday night uh, premiere of the draft. So help me understand what a typical draft week looks like for you. Um, I mean, it, throughout all my years, it's been a little bit different all the time, but it's not quite as busy leading up as you might think. Most of the work is done. That and makes so sense. you kind of yeah. like take a little bit of pause, take a deep breath before it all gets rolling again. So, you know, early in the week, it's usually a little bit slow. You're kind of just organizing yourself and getting your thoughts together, any final projects or anything like that. And then draft day used to start quite a bit early and it used to be two days. Now that it's three days, they started, I think eight o'clock at night or something like that on Thursday. So it's really kind of a long day. I know, I know there's, you know, different teams during the week that have been on, you know, you might have a scouting dinner Wednesday night or something like that, or I've been places where guys will go play golf in the afternoon Wednesday, or, you know, just oh, kind of relax <laughs> before the, before the storm, you yeah. know, things like that. And then you kind of button it up for the three days and then it really gets intense for a little bit. And uh, when that's over, then you kind of, cool down a little bit and it's off to minicamp you know so it gets rolling again pretty quick what's your personal like favorite draft day tradition like anything that that you have to do on draft day in order for it to to feel like okay the draft can <laughs> uh, start yeah I'm not I'm probably not as uh, superstitious as that but uh <laughs> no I, I don't really have one in all honesty it's just kind of get up and go to work really well that's okay I mean the draft is is fun to get ready for no matter how you get ready for it and, and you know we've heard a little bit from Brad Holmes already in some of his press conferences that he's done about kind of what position groups he's loving in this year's draft just which ones are kind of uh, strong this year because every year has different strengths right like there's some years where you have a really great wide receiver class or a really great quarterback class what do you feel like are kind of some of the the strong position groups this year um, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's a pretty good draft overall, certainly at the top. Um, certainly the quarterback class is one that comes to mind. Um, you're going to see a lot of guys go pretty high and it's very talented, deep class there. I think the wide receiver class is talented. Uh, that's a group that is often talented in the draft. There's a lot of good athletes that play that position coming out of college football. Um, and I'd say this year, the offensive line group is pretty talented, uh, as well. You know, I think there's some some depth there and some good players. Well, you know, you never want to finish a season where you have to pick in the top 10 or, or pick near the top of the draft because obviously that means your season didn't go how you wanted it to. But then when the draft comes around, all right, you've got this pick, this is what it is, and, and we're picking in the top 10. How exciting is that part of things for you as an evaluator to say, hey, we've got a lot of options open to us when you're picking this high? Yeah, when when you're picking higher in the draft, you're kind of um, deciding who, who to take more so as when you're picking later in the draft, you're kind of waiting to see who's left in, in a sense. Right. Um, 
but when you when you have a higher pick, uh, there is more pressure, and there it, you know you got to get it right. You got to get a uh, impact player who can make a difference for you. So it's um, you know it's very important that obviously you do your due diligence and you guys come to a conclusion and a consensus on like who's going to be the best player for your team and how they fit with your team. And I think the higher you get up, the less you know margin for error there is. So yeah. it does become a little bit more intense for sure. Well, I think a lot of people look at the draft and think, okay, Thursday night, that's the NFL draft, but it's also Friday and it's also all day on Saturday. And those Mm -hmm. next two days are important too. So I'm curious, what are your personal favorite days of the draft? Like which day do you get the most excited for? You know, uh, uh, like being a longtime scout, I think probably day three. That's really when as a scout, you kind of make your bones because some of those later round picks, you're going to have more influence them on the high pick, you know, if you're taking a guy at seven or three or one or 15, you know, obviously the head coach and the general manager, sometimes the owner, like th- those picks are going to be determined by the higher ups in the organization, sure. but you might get down in the seventh round and they might not have a great feel on some of the later round guys. And they're going to turn to the room and, you know, ask for some suggestions. I, you know, I've been places where they turn around, Hey, who do you like this guy or this guy, you know, and, and that's exciting for a scout to actually get that kind of input. So uh, that's that's where you kind of can dig some guys out and maybe hit on a guy that other teams might not have liked that much or, you know, really make a difference as a scout. So that that's always been kind of my favorite is the day three or it used to be day two. But, yeah, those later rounds are fun for a scout. Yeah, I love that. And and that's where you find diamonds in the rough too. That's where you find guys that didn't make it into the – all day conversations on on the sports networks that we're talking all day exactly. all night about you know this guy that guy but those day three picks can really end up being great football players and and it's exciting to see your work come to fruition because you, you know where to find them sure do you have a favorite story from a draft day like a day of the draft that this was uh, something fun that happened or or something exciting or, or a super intense situation what what is your favorite draft story I don't know if I could repeat all the draft stories I have <laughs> I'm on, sure. on the show, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, you know, one thing that was really interesting early in my career is I was on the Redskins when we made the Ricky Williams trade. And that was where um, Ditka was the head coach of the saints and they gave us their whole draft and maybe uh, another number one pick to move up to uh, take Ricky Williams in the draft. And we moved back and then we traded back up and took champ Pelly, who's obviously a hall of fame player. And I think, we moved back up again and took John Jansen, who was a good player for us. I think John even played here for the Lions for a couple of years. Um, and he was a really good player for us in Washington. So that was really exciting. And that happened very early in my career, but it's been an experience that I've always kind of looked back on and it's a pretty historical trade in NFL circles. So that was really interesting to go through. Yeah, that's awesome. It's awesome to be a part of some of those NFL moments that people still talk about years later. Well, you never know what moments could happen in this year's draft. Certainly Absolutely. going to be an exciting one coming up on Thursday. Dave, thank you so much for taking some time out of this crazy time of year to chat with us and help us understand the draft process a little bit better. And we are wishing you the best of luck uh, on Thursday night. Not a problem. Thank you very much for having me. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to the One Pridecast presented by MGM Grand Detroit. This time next week, we'll be talking about the Lions' new draft picks. We'll talk to you then. BetMGM, an official partner of the Detroit Lions, invites fans to stay in the action during the football offseason with a risk-free first bet up to $600. Sign up today with bonus code LIONS and discover everything the king of sportsbooks has to offer. Download the app or go to BetMGM.com and enter bonus code LIONS to make your first bet risk-free up to $600. Must be 21 years or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons.